Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live 10 at 10. Like, even though I had two kids and a home and two cars and married, it looked all good on the outside. It wasn't on the inside. A call to action in Grand Forks tonight as the city holds an event that's the first of its kind there. It was prompted by the opioid epidemic, which is plaguing our region, killing more and more people each year. Valley News Team's Ryan Laughlin has the community members who are trying to create a grassroots change. Carrie Sue knows a thing or two knock, knock. about problems out of sight. Scrubbing the sinks and all the counters and vacuuming, doing all the floors. For more than a decade, Carrie Sue has had her own cleaning company. But before she could do this, she had to get clean herself. The first time I ever used meth and any drugs was I was babysitting for the people I babysat for are the ones who introduced me. She says the first time she ever got drunk, she was 12. Then addiction took hold. I'd smoke weed every day. I'd go pick my kids up from school. I'd put my perfume on. I'd put my Visine in. People who don't want to be known are not going to be known. But today, the focus is on a more sinister substance. Opioids are dominating the drug scene. Carrie Sue has seen that too. We have family members who are addicted, you know, and you wouldn't even know unless you know them. I mean, they're functioning as normal people. They have kids. They have normal lives. They have jobs. But these people are hidden in darkness. Which brings her here. <laughs> City leaders are trying to spark a grassroots change in the community. The whole reason that I even desired to get sober was because I had two kids. For Carrie Sue, it took divine intervention. It was literally like a touch and everything changed. Now sober for more than a decade, she is just one of over a hundred others in this room trying to reach out, trying to reverse drug overdoses that are killing more people in the community now than ever before. From Grand Forks, Ryan Laughlin, Valley News Live. So how bad is the problem? In 2015, there were 223 hospital visits for drug overdoses. A year later, in 2016, 498, and 54 of them died. Already this year, numbers are twice as high as they were in 2016. And the cops say they've had multiple opioid investigations in every patrol area in Grand Forks. That means the drugs are affecting every part of the city. For information on how pervasive the problem is, visit our website and click on this story. ValleyNewsLive.com. Authorities in Cass and Clay counties are looking for a man they say likely has a gun and could be dangerous. About one this afternoon, a woman called authorities saying her ex-boyfriend forced her into his SUV at gunpoint outside her Fargo apartment. When they got to Dilworth, the woman pepper sprayed him, escaped the vehicle and ran to CVS in Moorhead. She was taken to Sanford Emergency Room. Police say her injuries are minor. Dilworth police are looking for the man, but they don't have much to go on. The woman was only able to tell police that her ex-boyfriend was driving a dark-colored SUV with Texas license plates and that she is also, also believes he's homeless. While they were looking through a box, they found what they thought was dynamite, sticks to dynamite. So they described it as having wires protruding. And this small town antique shop in Minnesota was in for quite the scare today after a small box was discovered to have what authorities believed was dynamite, leading to a shutdown of nearly half the town of Park Rapids. It was a tense afternoon for folks in that community. Authorities were very cautious over the discovery of the possible explosives found on the west side of town. As it turned out, what they had was not explosives, but old road flares. Valley News Team's Ashley Bishop was in Park Rapids as everything returned back to normal. A popular restaurant is back open after kicking out their customers in the middle of their lunch due to the scare of possible dynamite being found just across the street at a thrift store. My dishwasher kept trying to put dishes away and I'm like, no, you need to get out of here. And then everybody was standing in the parking lot. So we we're like, no, you need to like get off the premises. And then I see more and more and more and more police, state police, local police, sheriffs. Then they start putting barricades up everywhere on here. I th this doesn't make sense. Police evacuated the area up to a half mile and Highway 34 was shut down. Is everybody gawking kind of? At what's oh, going on? A little bit. They were confused. So, and yeah, a lot of them were worried about paying for their bills. I'm like, no, just, just go. This is the time to dine and dash. 
Police say after nearly three hours, it was determined by the Crow Wing County Bomb Squad it was only road flares that closely resembled dynamite. We're going to weigh on the side of, you know, safety. So I think we did everything right and just ensured that the community was as safe as they could be. I guess better safe than sorry. <laughs> I don't know. That's hilarious, though, too. Park Rapids police say about 50 emergency personnel responded and about 500 people were impacted by this incident. In Park Rapids, Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. The owner of Linda's Recycled Goods tells Valley News Live that a friend was watching her antique shop while she was gone, and that friend came across something she found alarming. And to be safe, she wanted someone else to take a look at it and called authorities. One adult and two toddlers were hurt in a three-car crash in Ottertail County. It happened this afternoon on Highway 55, 59 near Pelican Rapids. Investigators say a car driven by a 21-year-old woman was getting ready to turn left when it was rear-ended by another vehicle driven by a 16-year-old male. That pushed the car into the northbound lane where it was hit by an SUV. The adult driver, two kids in the SUV were treated for non-life-threatening injuries. Two people are accused of stealing some very valuable collectibles, including World War II items, along with autographed boxing gloves, including Ken Norton Jr., one of the five men to defeat Muhammad Ali. According to the Clay County Sheriff's Office, the estimated value of all the items is $80,000. Investigators say the collectibles were taken from a home near Barnesville. The two suspects taken into custody are Justin Marlin and Amber Hedstrom. They're facing nine felony theft charges. Police say calls are mounting year after year regarding illegally parked trailers. We rode along with officers throughout North Fargo today, passing several trailers parked on streets. This summer, police tell us they're going to be more aggressive when it comes to ticketing and towing. They add that trailers can sink into the pavement, which could lead to street repairs and wind up costing you money in special assessments. You can actually see right here where the trailer has sunk in, I'm guessing, from the wheel previously if it's been parked here. That's the kind of damages that we get. Uh, that's the kind of things that affect your specials. Uh, you as the homeowners are the ones that get stuck putting the bill for that. Be aware as you head back from Lakes Country after the holiday weekend, patrols will be out looking for illegally parked trailers. I finally took the first step towards in independence and it made me realize that I wanted this more than anything. That was Samantha Mason. She was forced to drop out of high school for medical reasons, but she didn't want that to be the end of her story. With the help of Fraser Limited, she was able to take a GED course with Fargo Public Schools and was one of the speakers at tonight's graduation ceremony. She doesn't plan on wasting any time to put what she's learned to use and has already applied to NDSU to help others like she was helped. Helping youths that need it that are homeless or have other barriers, you know, because of how much they've done for me. It's inspired me to give back and do something for everyone else. Samantha was one of 70 adult students graduating tonight. She hopes to start her college career next spring. Minnesota Senate Majority Leader Paul Gazelka says he thinks the end of the legislature's special session is near. Lawmakers are three days into the session to finish the budget. Gazelka confirmed they would remove changes to how labor contracts are ratified to win some Democratic votes on a remaining budget bill. A government shutdown would begin in July if the legislature doesn't finish.